Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to an introduction to technical analysis. My name is Todd Rich. I'm head of education here at Nadex, and I want to thank you all for joining for this session. I will tell you right up front that we are recording this session, and it will be available both on the Nadex website under learnings, a learning section, webinars, archive. It'll also be available on our YouTube page. And if you're not following us on YouTube, I would recommend that you do that. We also do a morning analysis every single morning. We live stream at 8.45 a.m. Eastern. It's about 15, 20 minutes. All right, and I see more people are joining us here, but we're gonna go ahead and just get moving along. Before I jump into today's session, I do need to share this disclaimer since this webinar, as are all of our webinars, are brought to you by our compliance department. They're our sponsor. Trading on Nadex involves risk and may not be appropriate for everyone. Any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. And this is an educational session. Please don't construe anything I say as a buy or sell recommendation. I am doing this for your education purposes. Okay, so what are we gonna get into today? And uh, I just wanna say right now, if, uh, if you can hear me, if you don't mind just putting in the chat, everything sounds good. If for some reason at some point you have audio difficulties, please try refreshing your browser. Uh, this is being brought to you over the internet. So uh, the internet is not always wholly reliable. Uh, so uh, often your technical difficulties can be resolved by simply refreshing your browser or joining again. And again, if anyone could just put in, hey, we, you sound great, or uh, anything in the little chat, I just want to make sure that we are uh, all good here this morning. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Thank you a ton. Uh, sometimes uh, you just never know. Uh, again, it's being brought over the internet, and I just want to make sure we're all good. All right, what are we going to cover today? Uh, I am going to spend just a quick minute on who is Nadex, uh, mostly because we've got a lot of new people, uh, thousands. Yeah, it's just remarkable how many new customers Nadex has had coming into our markets. And I, I like to give a little bit of, of a review on who Nadex is. And then we're going to get into the topic at hand. Where does technical analysis come from? You hear this word, technical analysis. Uh, where does it originate? And what does it mean? What is the concept uh, behind technical analysis? And then ultimately, why do you care? And in the end, that's really what's kind of important, uh, but you need to understand a little bit of the history behind it. And I also think it's kind of fascinating and interesting to get a little bit of that historical perspective and what the thought process behind technical analysis is. Then we'll talk about why you care, and then we're gonna get into some basics. Uh, we're going to talk about candlesticks, all right, candlestick charts. Uh, I mean, again, we've got so many new customers. They're new to the markets. This is the kind of thing that you can use trading any market. So it's a really good foundational tool uh, for new traders just to understand charts. And then I'm going to talk about some concepts, things like trends, reversals, and support and resistance. Now, we've got some indicators and drawing tools that are available to you at Nadex. I'm going to talk about some of them, but then I'm actually going to jump over to the platform and do what we call a little bit of off-roading. I'm going to go into the platform, and I'm going to demonstrate some of those tools that are available. I'm not going to go into all of them, but uh, you will be able to uh, at least see where they all come from and uh, where they're available and you could probably do a little bit more if there's particular tools that you'd like um, additional education on it's certainly available out there all right so who is nadex i don't want to spend a lot of time on this i'm going to go through it quickly uh, north american derivatives exchange nadex is an acronym as are almost everything in the financial services industry it's an acronym we love our acronyms in fact uh, here's another acronym cftc uh, that is the commodity future trade commission 
Nadex is a regulated exchange. We are a properly regulated exchange. We have to adhere to all the rules, principles, laws of the United States. We do report into a regulator. They do audit us. Uh, so the reason I like to mention that is a lot of people come to Nadex and they come to Nadex because of binary options. They want to trade binary options. And we are one of just a couple regulated binary options exchanges in the United States. I will say we are the premier binary options exchange in the United States that is regulated uh, because almost 100% of the volume or very close to it um, goes through Nadex. Now, from the United States, can you access other binary option markets? And there are people who are customers of Nadex that are not in the United States uh, they might be able to access binary markets elsewhere. But uh, with those offshore binary options exchanges, I would just simply say, caveat emptor, buyer beware. If you ever had any challenges, concerns, uh, problems, and you wanted some sort of uh, remediation or a, a course of action in order to get something solved in an unregulated world, that's going to be or can be pretty challenging. We are fully regulated. There is no nefarious things going on at Nadex. We have a proper regulated exchange with a central limit order book uh, with the ability to withdraw funds, all your trading behavior. I mean, this is a proper exchange, just like any other exchange in the United States. The CFTC is our regulator. It's the same regulator that that regulates the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CME, or ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange, who owns the New York Stock Exchange. So uh, yes, it's a properly regulated environment. And that is rather important. Now, Nadex itself was designed for retail traders with small notional value contracts that give you a very low cost of entry. You don't need thousands and thousands of dollars to access price action. You can do so at Nadex with smaller quantities of money and everything is defined risk. You're never gonna get surprised and get a margin call or, or lose everything because a position went uh, awry or really uh, you know, against you you know exactly what you could potentially make, what you could potentially lose before you even enter a trade. So there aren't any surprises in that regard. Uh, so you can manage your risk a whole lot better. And as I mentioned, we are a binary options exchange, but we also off offer other products like call spreads and knockouts. And the thing is with the nature of Nadex products and their short-term price action and, uh, that's what people are looking for when they come to Nadex is trading. They're looking for trading action. A lot of traders will use technical analysis to access that short-term price action. Uh, when you're looking at long-term fundamentals uh, for a trend on something, what's happening to something over the course of say a year, that isn't really why someone comes and trades at Nadex. Uh, our, our products are, I mean, we can have products as short as five minutes, 20 minutes, two hours daily and weekly. Uh, so it's a lot of price action. Uh, that's what people, the, the retail traders are looking for. Low cost of entry, defined risk, and they will use technical analysis. So it's a nice tool to have in your toolkit to trade and access Nadex markets. So let's talk a bit about where technical analysis comes from. And this is a little bit of a history lesson. You might have heard of a gentleman called Charles Dow. Uh, he lived in the 1800s, uh, died just after turn of the century. And if you haven't heard of Mr. Dow, you have, you just didn't realize he was Dow of Dow Jones. So when you talk about the Dow Jones company or uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which I'll get into in a second, that was Charles Dow. Now, back in 1882, he founded this company, Dow Jones and Company, and it was a media company uh, and it was a newsletter. And he was trying to provide independent analysis and news for the markets. 
All right. And that's what because back then, a lot of the news and analysis that people got on the markets to trade the markets was actually marketing material and was being sponsored by specific people with a specific agenda. And Mr. Dow wanted to have an independent source. Now, what's interesting is that little newsletter that Dow Jones and company created seven years later eventually morphed into what is the Wall Street Journal? That still survives to this day as a, a stalwart in the industry, really a pillar of truly independent news analysis for the financial markets. So it's rather interesting. Charles Dow, he creates Dow Jones and Company, a, a newsletter for independent news sources and reports on the markets. And that ultimately becomes the Wall Street Journal. Now, what does this have to do with technical analysis? Mr. Dow had some theories on the markets. All right, and I'm going to go into a, I am going to discuss a little bit about the theories that he, that he had, but in order to do analysis for his theories and what he was thinking, he needed some numbers. He needs st some statistics. He needed uh, something mathematical that he could work with. So he invented the Dow Jones Industrial Average to track you know, the broader market, all right? That he wanted a number where he can see what was happening amongst the broader market, not in an individual stock. So he invents the Dow Jones Industrial Average and he used the tracking of those numbers as one of his principles for what is referred to as Dow theory. Now, what is Dow theory? Charles Dow came up with a bunch of principles that he used to try to understand and analyze market behavior, All right? And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in, uh, on the next slide, but he created these, these rules, these principles, uh, some ideas. What is it that you could use to understand crowd behavior, trading behavior, market behavior that would drive prices in an individual stock, in an asset, in a commodity, in an index, in, in any pricing, when it comes to the financial space, when you're looking and analyzing markets, he had these rules and those, are, those principles actually set the foundation for technical analysis. So Charles Dow is often referred to as the father of technical analysis. It's really rather interesting, some of the concepts and principles he had, and he built some pretty large institutions with Dow Jones Company, the Wall Street Journal, the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and then all he contributed with Dow Theory. Now let's talk a little bit about some concepts behind technical analysis, which are really Charles Dow's principles for the markets. All right, now one of them, I'm not gonna go through all of them because there, uh, there are a lot of these uh, different principles, but one of them is that markets are efficient. All right, markets are efficient and that all news, whenever a news announcement comes out, everyone gets the news and that immediately gets discounted in the price of an asset. So whatever you're trading, if there's a, a news report, uh, there's a uh, inventory report, there's an earnings announcement, uh, there's uh, a legal action, uh, whatever that is, that markets, everyone will get that information. And then, you know, people who, who like it will want to buy, people who dislike it will want to sell. And that equilibrium of buyers and sellers will find a new price for that asset and that markets are efficient and that all that news is immediately discounted into the price. Now, that was rather interesting back in Charles Dow days because news did not exactly travel all that fast. Nowadays, we get news announcements in milliseconds. I mean, fractions of a second. Uh, news is broadcast widely and quickly immediately. Uh, so even more so than it was back in Charles Dow's days. Now, what Charles Dow did is because these markets were efficient and that all that news was getting priced into the, the value or the price of an asset, 
he took those prices and he plotted them on a chart. Right? He said, here's, here's the price of an asset now. Uh, here's the price of gold. Here's the price of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. He would put a price on a chart. And as the price moved over time, he would put additional uh, prices on there and you could plot the movement of an asset on a chart. Um, oh, and I'm getting a couple of questions and I will cover that, um, some of these questions uh, when we get over to the platform. Uh, it'll be easier to cover it then. All right, so now, so Dow's plotting these, these, these prices and what he, his theory was is that if you plotted these prices, you would see a pattern. You would identify patterns. All right, there would be some type of pattern that could potentially be identified. And those patterns would, would trend based upon supply and demand. When there were more buyers, it would go up. When there were more sellers, it would go down. And you would, uh, you would be able to plot these trends. You would be able to see these patterns. They would be identifiable. In fact, if you understood what certain patterns were, you might be able to see them forming that might help inform your decision whether you wanted to buy or sell if you were if you thought you were seeing a a particular pattern repeat itself and that all the prices of an asset they're simply going to trend based on supply and demand and that those changes in the trend all right shift when news comes out and supply and demand changes those trends would change and that you would have these repeatable, oops, sorry, you would have these repeatable patterns. And that is sort of what you're doing on technical analysis. There are so many different things to technical analysis. We're gonna cover some of the basic ones in a bit, but the whole goal is to be able to look at a chart, look at these price trends, see where these trends are changing and try to identify patterns that might be repeating to help inform your trading decisions. All right, so that is ultimately why you care about technical analysis. As a trader, uh, traders are looking to take advantage of being able to read a chart and identify those price patterns so that you can see where are these trends. And as a trend goes, you wanna be part of that trend until the trend exhausts itself, whether it's a trend up because there's more buyers or whether it's a trend down because there's more sellers. And when that trend exhausts itself and uh, it's run its course, you would see a reversal. And you would see, and those are often called retracements. So a reversal in a trend when uh, when there's more buyers in control and it's trending up, 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 but then you start to see a reversal where sellers come back in, you're looking for a reversal where sellers might now push the price a little bit lower. Uh, in trading vernacular, what you'll often hear out there is the trend is your friend, right? Is don't fight the trend. It's sort of like the statement, don't fight City Hall. Uh, you, you don't want to battle the trend. If the trend is going in a certain way, uh, you might as well try to join it and ride it as long as you can. It's, if it's going to work in your favor, uh, let's, that's what traders are looking to do, is identify those trends, be part of that trend, uh, ride that trend for some profitability, and then when there's a reversal, go the other way or simply get out of your position and wait to identify if another pattern were to form and to help make your next trading decision. And there are a bunch of different patterns out there. So that's ultimately what traders are looking to do. They're looking to use price changes to identify entry and exit points. And really what you're looking for is to identify opportunity, where can I profit or manage risk? And that's really what people use technical analysis for. It's uh, uh, often you'll hear uh, it's an if this, then that sort of scenario. Uh, if this happens, I might want to get into the trade. And if that were to happen, I would either want to get out for a profit. I mean, you should have a profit goal in mind when you get into a trade. And that 
technical analysis might help you identify where you would look to potentially exit your position. Uh, it would also, though, help you say, oops, I was wrong. I didn't read this chart correctly or I didn't trade it properly. Uh, and it's to manage your risk. OK, this is what I was looking for. It didn't happen. It's going against me. I want to stop myself out. I want to minimize my losses. So people use technical analysis for both sides of the trade. They look at they look at it to uh, identify an opportunity to enter a position, whether that's long or short. They look at it as a way to <clears throat> identify where you would want to exit the, that position and what exiting that position could be to take a profit or to stop your losses and to minimize your losses. So now let's talk about reading a candlestick. If you've never, you know, if there are a lot of people who aren't familiar with these candlesticks or you see them and you don't really, you see the, the chart, but you don't really know what you're looking at. Now, a candlestick. A candlestick is a slice in time. Uh, by the way, whenever you look at a candlestick chart, you're going to have to choose a time frame. All right. It's uh, if you're looking at a five minute candlestick chart, each candle represents five minutes. If you're looking at a 15 minute candlestick chart, each candle represents 15 minutes. Right. If you're looking at 30 minutes, it's a 30 minute window in time. What happened in that 30 minutes? Um, so let's just use 15 minute candlestick for, for an example. Each candle is 15 minutes. And uh, what you know uh, with that candlestick is you know where it opened. That would be the bottom of the body of the candle. Uh, you uh, actually. It's not necessarily the body. You've got a body of, it's not necessarily the bottom. You've got a body of the candlestick, all right? There's a top and a bottom. That's that, that box, that green box or the red box in the middle. That's the body. And if the candlestick is green, all right, that means the bottom of the box is where it opened and the top of the box is where it closed. And it's green because it closed in that 15 minute window, the closing price was higher than the opening price. Now, it could also be red. Uh, the reason a candlestick would be red is because the it opened at a certain price and it closed at a lower price. So that body, that box, that is where it opened and closed and the color tells you whether it traded down in that period or if it traded up in that period. So that is why. And um, now you'll notice outside of the body are wicks. Uh, the wick, it shows you the highest price that it traded. And the bottom wick shows you the lowest price that it traded. Now, does every candle stick look like this? No, a candlestick could have no wicks at all. The opening and closing price could be the high and low for that particular window. So there would be no wicks. Um, sometimes there's really long wicks and the body is really tiny. It opens and closes near the same price. In fact, it can open and close at the same price and there would be no body. It would be a, a line where the open and close was the exact same price and the, and, the, uh, and the wicks are different. So the shape of each candlestick is going to be determined by where it opens, where it closed, and what the high and the low in that particular window was. So that's what you're looking at is an individual candlestick tells you a lot of information it's a lot of information in that little period, the time slice that you chose 15 minutes. And what you get in a chart is you put a bunch of these candlesticks together. Every 15 minutes, you get a new candlestick. And then you'll start to see shapes. Okay. So that is the anatomy of a candlestick. Now, let's talk a bit about trends and time frames okay because these are important concepts because i've mentioned time frames for your candlestick the time frame for your entire chart also makes a difference are you looking at a shorter term or longer term picture when you build a chart 
and you look at a chart and you're looking for trends, what are you actually looking at and what type of indicator to help you make your trading decisions are you looking at? And really what I want to show here is take a look at this particular trend. All right. It doesn't matter how, how much time in each candlestick. Here's a series of candlesticks and I'm looking at a trend and you can see that it's looks like it's trending lower, right? That in this little window that I picked, you can see that in the upper left, that's where the price was. As, as time moved on, the, the price of this asset, the candles showed it moving lower. It looks like it's moving in a downward trend. Now, uh, that is actually helpful, but you might need to put that in a broader context. So what if I were to back this up and take a look at a longer trend? If you actually take a look at this chart, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll notice the chart below is actually the same chart. At the right side of that chart, it is in a bit of a downtrend. So right now we're in a little bit of a downtrend, but if I back it up, you can see this is part of a much larger chart where it actually appears that it's a in a bit of an uptrend. So uh, the question is, is, are you in a reversal right here? But your time frame matters. The amount of time that you look on your entire chart does make a difference on what you're going to be looking at and what sort of patterns you may see forming. So you've got to back it up and you could take a look at a longer perspective or you can zoom in and take a look at a shorter perspective. And it's not, as I mentioned, just the date range of the chart or the time range of the chart, it's also the time interval for each individual candlestick. So, and I will show you what I mean when we go over to the platform, but I can look at a longer term, uh, you know, I could back up a five minute chart and see it for the last week, or I can put in an, an hourly chart and look back for a month. Uh, you'll see how the, the, the shapes, the patterns, uh, will potentially be different. And uh, it's going to be incumbent upon you to determine what time frame works best for your analysis, what candlestick time frame works best for your analysis, and what is helping you make your trading decisions the best. Okay, so, and I'm going to go back over it just so, you know what, because I did get a couple of questions on the WIC. Uh, and whether the candle is filled or not, it is not filled. I am going to go back for a second because I do want, um, and I got three of these questions. So uh, it's interesting. It's uh, <laughs> Please type in your questions because if you're not getting it, uh, someone else might not, be, might not be getting it either. So I'm just going to go through a candlestick, an individual candlestick again. The body of the candlestick shows you the open and close in that time frame. It's going to be a color. It's going to be green or red. And that is going to tell you, so the body is going to be filled. If there is absolutely no body uh, at all, um, if it opened and closed to the exact same price, there would just be a, a, a line there. It would look like the letter T uh, or a cross. Uh, it wouldn't have any body at all. If there is a body, all right, meaning it opened and closed at different prices, it's going to be filled. It is going to be filled on a, on a candlestick and it's either gonna be filled, generally people use green for it closed higher than it opened and red, it closed lower than where it opened. The wick simply makes sure that you understand the range that it traded in. It may, I mean, and a wick can be really long, I've drawn a very simple looking, but I, we'll, we can look for one where the wick, where it spiked way up and came way, way back down. You can have a long wick up top and you can have a long wick down below. You could have no wick at all. You could have a tiny wick. Uh, the wick is only gonna let you know during that 15 minute window, what was the total range? What was the low during that 15 minutes? What is the high during that 15 minutes? Where did it open during those 15 minutes? Where did it close during those 15 minutes? And the color is going to tell you whether it, it, it opened, where it, whether it closed higher or lower. Hopefully I covered that, that, that answers everyone's questions.
Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about a couple of patterns. And I'm just going to give you, uh, actually, you know, we, we've looked at trends. Sorry, we looked at trends. You're looking for, hey, is it an uptrend? Is it a downtrend? Um, when a trend changes, it's called a reversal. And I'm going to give you, a, and this is just two reversal patterns. You can go out there. You could probably Google it. There are a lot of other patterns out there. I mean, I'm not getting into all of the different patterns, head and shoulders, double bottoms. Uh, there are there are a ton out there. If you Google technical analysis, you'll find them all. Uh, and the question is, in the end, which are the ones that help you out? Which are the ones that you like, that you see, that you're comfortable with, that when you trade using them, help you make a decision that is profitable? So the first one, the first reversal I'm going to give you is called the hammer. Okay, that is that is what we're showing you right now. Now, the reason it's called a hammer, if you look at it, here is a candlestick, and we were talking about how these candles can each look a little different. It looks like a hammer, right? It's got a, a body up top that looks like the head of a hammer, and it's got a long wick below it that looks like the handle of a hammer. That is why it's called a hammer uh, is one, it kind of looks like one. Um, it's also called a hammer because it's it's actually a buy signal, all right? A hammer is something you look for in a downtrend. You see a downtrend and you can see on the right-hand side of this little chart, there is a downtrend. It is trending lower, trending lower, trending lower. And then you see this hammer formation, this handle, this hammer candlestick. And that's really, it's also called a hammer because the shorts have hammered it down, hammered it down, hammered it down, and the shorts have become exhausted. The shorts have run out of steam. They tried to push it lower, and you can see that because there's a long wick down below. They tried to push this price lower, but buyers stepped in and the body of the chart, if you notice, there is no wick at the top of a hammer. It, all right, it's the top of the hammer uh, is, uh, is, is the top of the, of the body. Now, um, it can be red or green, all right? Uh, a hammer can be both, but, if you've got a green hammer, it is a stronger indicator that a reversal might be coming into play. Uh, this, I mean, there's uh, no guarantees here, but this is what people look for in a reversal is they look for a downtrend, they look for this hand, a hammer formation, the sellers tried to push it down, you got that long wick below, but, uh, and the reason a green hammer is stronger is it opened, it got, they tried to hammer it down and it came right back up and it actually closed at the high for this particular candle. So buyers seem to have stepped in and it's sort of showing that buyers might be taking over. Now, it can open and they could try to push it lower and buyers come in and it can close. And so it could actually be a red hammer. It's still a hammer candle formation. It still does, you know, that people do consider that a potential reversal, but a green hammer is stronger than a red hammer. And you're, a hammer is you are in a downtrend and you're looking for a potential reversal to go up and you're looking for a potential buy opportunity. Now, the other reversal is a hanging man. Um, now, if you noticed, a hanging man looks an awful lot like a hammer, right? It's almost essentially the same little formation. The big difference between a hanging man and a hammer is that a hanging man is what you would see after an uptrend. So if you are in an uptrend, all right, and all of a sudden you see this particular formation, 
it looks like a hammer. It's called a hanging man. It's to differentiate between whether you're in a downtrend or an uptrend and what type of reversal you're potentially looking for. But if you're in an uptrend and um, and you see this formation, and it tends to indicate that the buyers have become exhausted, all right? And now sellers are coming in and you might see a reversal and it might turn into a sell signal, okay? And just to quickly review that, a hammer is a buy signal where you're in a downtrend and you're looking for a potential reversal for it to go up. A hanging man is a sell signal. Uh, you're in an uptrend and you're looking for a potential reversal to go lower. Okay, now we've talked a little bit about trends. We've talked about reversals. Let's talk a bit about support and resistance. And this is really where you're looking, where are their levels? Are there prices where buyers seem to be stepping in or where sellers seem to be stepping in? And you can look at some charts. And again, this is a 15 minute chart of the S&P 500. When I, when I grabbed this particular chart, it was uh, uh, just, you know, a, a, maybe a month or two ago. And you can clearly, you can see that when it got up to, I mean, when it was down around this bottom gray box that I drew, it was a level where buyers, that whatever price that was, buyers seemed to want to step in at that level. So I'm looking at a candlestick chart over time and I see here's one place where the buyers have stepped in. And when it got up to this next level, all right, it actually plateaued a bit. Um, and that actually turned into a place where sellers stepped in. So I've got buyers down here below and I've got sellers that seem to step in at this other level. And so we tend to call the bottom one a support level. There seems to be support at that particular price. And we call the one up above a resistance level where sellers seem to step in. When you break through a, uh, a if, when you break through a resistance level, it often becomes a support level on the way back down. If you break through a support level below, it often becomes a resistance level on the way back up. But you can clearly see how there was some support and resistance at these two levels. Now, you could wait and try to say, all right, I'm identifying, I'm seeing it. It seems to be uh, when it gets up here, this looks like it's a, a resistance level up above, I'm going to try to short when it gets up here. Or this is a support level when it comes down here, I might want to consider trying to buy. All right, now, are there other levels in here? Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of different levels. Uh, I'm actually, I, I drew, this is that same chart, all right, and I dropped on a, one of the tools that's available at MadeX, and you'll find this tool other places as well. It's called a Fibonacci retracement. Now, you might be asking, who the heck is Fibonacci? Uh, Fibonacci identified a ratio. It is a ratio that is seen in nature. When you look at snail shells or a, a a, a flower, um, even the human body, um, Leonardo da Vinci kind of saw that as well, is there are some natural forming ratios in nature. And there's actually a mathematical uh, way to calculate the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, you can go look it up, but it's if you start at zero uh, and you start counting, you go zero and then you go one. Now you take the two previous numbers and add them together to give you your next Fibonacci sequence in the Fibonacci. So it goes zero, one. So zero plus one is one. So you'd have zero, one, one. Then you take the two ones and add them together. So zero, one, one, two. Then you take the one and the two, it'd become three. 
five, eight. There is a natural occurring ratio. Uh, and some people take that ratio. It's a, and you don't need to be able to do the math. You can draw it on your chart and it gives you these natural ratios. I dropped Fibonacci on this particular chart uh, with the top, uh, all the way up at the top being the top and then the bottom being the bottom price. And what's really rather interesting is I had drawn on this chart what I saw as, hey, this is looks like it's a resistance level. This looks like it's a support level. And interestingly enough, it fit right within the Fibonacci sequence. Now, uh, and they're simply called Fibonacci retracement levels. Again, you don't need to know how the math is done, but you can use a tool like this and help you potentially identify levels where you might see support and resistance. And a lot of people are looking at these retracement levels, and sometimes it becomes a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy where you would see support and resistance at specific Fibonacci retracement levels. And for instance, you can see this 23.6 uh, level, which is the one I've got highlighted, it's the, the bottom one that I've got highlighted. It was a support level. It kept on acting as support. And the level right above it, the 38.2, seemed to be acting quite a bit like a resistance level within the broader support and resistance level that I had initially drawn on. It might give you opportunity to find other you know, trading ideas within those price ranges. Now, of course, it didn't always work. It did pop through those levels. And, and what's interesting is when I put the Fibonacci sequence on, when it broke those, two, those, those yellow levels in the middle, it went right to the red levels right around it. It's, it's interesting that you can see that. Now, do I know if it's going to hold at one of those levels or break to the next one? No, I don't. But these are simply tools that are available to help you identify when you might want to get in, might you, when you might want to get out, and when you might want to take profits and when you might want to cut your losses. And yes, Nadex does indeed have a Fibonacci indicator. When I, I am going to be going over to the platform very shortly, I will show you how to use it. I will actually show you where, where to click and we'll put, we'll put one on some charts. And if there's any particular charts you'd like to see, go ahead and just put them in the chat when I jump over to that part of the, because uh, I'm almost done with the slide deck, I'll just pull up whatever product you want to see and we'll play around with it a little bit. All right, so um, when it comes to indicators and drawing tools, because that was a perfect question, does Nadex have that? As a matter of fact, if you look on the left, we've got all sorts of indicators. Uh, I think there's 25 of them. Uh, they're listed there. We have in-platform education, so that little I next to all of them. So right now I've got MACD, Moving Average Convergence Divergence, highlighted. If you aren't familiar with what that is, you can hover over that little eye and it gives you in-platform education and it, give, it tells you a little bit about that. Uh, if you want to do much more in-depth, there is so much information out on the internet on how these different technical indicators potentially work. And again, it's going to be incumbent upon you to choose one that you like. Some people love Bollinger Bands. Some people really like RSI, Relative Strength Index. Uh, you know, so people use all, a bunch of all of these. Um, you've got to choose which one works for you. When it comes to drawing tools, that's on the right. You can draw in your own trend lines. You can draw in your own channels. You can draw in your own support and resistance levels. Uh, yes, Fibonacci retracement is something that you can draw on your chart. I will definitely show that. Uh, so there are a bunch of different drawing tools that are also available on the Nadex platform. Uh, so uh, you'll have to play around with all of them to determine you know, what, what's helping you the most and what do you like to use. Now, before we wrap this up, this is absolutely critical. I always have one gem in all of my presentations uh, and I call it the red alert, pay attention. This is really important. So 
an important rule when using technical analysis. All right. So if you're not, if you were, if you were dozing off, <laughs> wake up. This is really important. Second time today, I'm using this phrase, caveat emptor, buyer beware. Okay. Um, and the reason is technical analysis is not a guarantee. It is not perfect. Uh, some, uh, I'll say even the Titanic had a chart room. And when we're talking about reading charts, the Titanic had a chart room. In fact, every ship that sank and is at the bottom of the ocean had a chart room and the charts didn't help them all that much, did it? So it is really important. You do need to be aware that technical analysis are not 100% accurate. This is not a guarantee. This is not a lock. It is simply a tool to help you in your trading decisions and you want to manage risk. In fact, using technical analysis, it's not just about identifying those opportunities where you can get into a trade or get out of a trade. It's also you know, where you should be managing your risk. If something is going against you, you can see, uh-oh, this might really go against me. Uh, it's time to get out of this trade. So that is very important. You know, do, you, you can't buy 100% of this. This was Charles Dow's theory. It was his theory. Uh, it is not a rule. The markets can behave how the markets behave. All right, with that, if you've got any customers, uh, customers, if you've got any questions, after this, I'm gonna to try to answer all the questions. We're gonna be jumping over to the platform and playing around for 10 or 15 minutes. But if you've got any questions about the, our products, our platform, the tools that are available to you, uh, your account, please email customer service at nadex.com. We are here to help you. And if you're struggling or having any challenges, we can't help you if we don't know, so please email us, customer service at nadex.com. Also, follow us on social media, and I, I mentioned this up front. I can't emphasize this enough. Go to YouTube, look up the Nadex YouTube channel, and subscribe to it. Uh, we are constantly publishing content, video content up there. You can watch it at your leisure. Uh, a lot of the content is also in the webinars section of the Nadex website but we have a lot more that's available on our YouTube channel. And again, every morning uh, we do a live stream, 8.45 a.m. Eastern, 7.45 a.m. Central. It's a live stream and we talk about hot spots in the market. What news was coming out overnight? Uh, what news reports are coming out through the day? When might you want to be looking at the markets and in what products? Because maybe it's a product that you don't necessarily trade that often, um, but there might be some volatility or price action. And we do bring up charts and we do a little bit of technical analysis. Again, no guarantees there, but it's a nice tool to help you along your journey. If you're not joining those in the morning, they are immediately available. The recordings are immediately available. So if you wanted to go there now to the Nadex YouTube channel, you could find this morning's morning analysis and you could watch that morning analysis. In fact, even uh, before that, our chief commercial officer does a, a maybe a minute, minute and a half market update early in the mornings, just to kind of give you an idea of what to be aware of. But at the morning analysis sessions, we actually jump in and do some analysis and we bring up charts and look at platforms and things of that nature. Okay, with that, let me take a quick peek at the uh, questions. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. We're all good. All right, if anyone wants to put any, of any other product that they might, you know, gold, oil, uh, an equity index, uh, a foreign exchange product, I am now going to do what is called the off-roading session. Let's jump over to the Nadex platform. And let's make sure, all right, so you should now be looking at the Nadex platform. Let's play around with some of the tools that are available. All right, this is the, the show me part. All right, I am going to bring up binary options. I'm just gonna use binary options. You can see that's, that's me in the upper left-hand corner. And let's take a look at a commodity, just because they've been interesting. And gold is, been one that's been a bit volatile. So I am going to take a look at daily binary options in gold. And uh, wow, 
gold has moved around today. I am going to take a click on that. I'm now going to hide this. Now notice in the upper left-hand corner, I currently am running a one minute chart. Let's make this a 15 minute chart. You know, I could also make it a 30 minute chart, all right? Um, so you, you've, you, got, you can determine what time frame each one of these candles represents, okay? So each candle right now is 30 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna move this back down to 15 minutes. And now you're looking, now when I scroll in and out on the chart, you know what, we see all of these strikes. I'm gonna take some of these strikes away just because I wanna declutter the chart. You can customize your chart. I simply right clicked the indicators, the drawing tools. Uh, we're using candlestick charts. There are other types of charts, but I think candlestick is the most popular. I am not going to show the strikes. I'm gonna hide those. I just wanna see the chart. There we go, that's a little easier. And and then, yeah, you can click on any one of the binary options and it'll just kind of show you that level. Uh, there's only 37 minutes left for a gold to trade. You know, maybe I should have chosen one with a little bit longer time frame, but it doesn't really matter. I got a 15 minute chart. And if I scroll in and out, you can see that, I oh, I do want to put, you know, you can um, Monday, uh, you could see the dates down below how long this chart goes back. If I wanna just look at what's been happening, say in the last couple days, I'm zooming in, which is might be more useful to me when I'm trading a binary option. You can see it, this is from Tuesday, Wednesday, and here we are on Thursday, All right? This is what's going on today. Uh, you know, gold went down and it has come back up. I can also scale my chart so I can make it bigger or smaller by clicking and dragging on the numbers on the right-hand side. So let's have a little fun and play a little bit with some of our tools. Uh, we asked about Fibonacci. And by the way, first, the first thing I might wanna do, you know, I don't like that. I wanna pick something other than gold. Um, let's see what oil looks like. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna really matter too much. Here we go. Ooh, oils, you know what? This is this actually looks like it's gonna be a little bit more fun. This is a 15 minute chart. This is oil on a 15 minute chart. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Let's make this bigger. I wanna, I wanna give myself something to work with here. Perfect. Okay, so number one, if I wanna draw, I, I can go to my drawings and if I just wanna do a simple trend line, okay? Um, I go down to trend, I click on trend, and you can see, and now I'm gonna click once and it's going to give me a line and I can sort of fit it in. And there, I've, I've got a nice little trend line from you know, gold's in an upper trend. Now, does that help me? Uh, maybe I wanna put a channel around my trend. So I am now going to delete that and let's go take a look at channels. Right. Channels are very similar to a trend line except I can fit a channel to my chart for tops and bottoms. I'm gonna click in the lower left and I'm just going to sort of draw up. I click again, I'm going to now drop this down. Now I might wanna fix it. Now I've got a channel. Can I fit this channel? Um, can I fit this chart into this channel a little bit? And it's going to, I'm, I'm having to monkey around with it a little bit. Uh, just, you know, and, and you've got to learn your drawing skills uh, do certainly come into play. There we go. All right, let's just extend this out a little bit. And I want to bring this bottom one in. Now, what's interesting here, and I, you know, my drawing skills aside, is I can see that I'm in an uptrend and I fit the channel so that uh, when it, if we're in an uptrend, apparently when it touches the top end of this channel, it turns into a little bit of a sell signal. And it's done that once and there was an opportunity here, it did it twice uh, again. And when it hits the bottom end of the channel, it turns into a buying opportunity. Um, it hit it here and this was a buying opportunity until it was a selling opportunity. It never quite got down to the bottom. It was a buying opportunity and we kind of wavered um, and then it turned into a selling opportunity. 
down to a buying opportunity. Um, channels, one way to, uh, I mean, these are all just tools. You've got to make a determination which one works for you. So I just picked a couple of them, a simple trend line, a channel. You can have an, you know, a channel could be flat. It could be up, it could be down. You, we asked about Fibonacci. All right, now we're in an upward trend. So uh, let's go ahead and drop a Fibonacci retracement. I'm gonna click on Fibonacci retracement. And the way Fibonacci works is if we're in an uptrend, I start in the bottom left-hand corner. If we're in a downtrend, I start in the top left-hand corner. All right, so you're always gonna start on the left. It's whether you're starting up high or starting down low. We're in a, an uptrend, so I'm gonna click down here at the bottom um, of the Fibonacci. Now, I'm going to draw a line up to the top, all right? So I went from the bottom to the top, all right? I'm going to, um, there we go. I'm gonna click on the top and then I'm just gonna drag it over to the right and it's going to give me some lines. Now I am going to get rid of my channel in here. All right, let's just delete. Oh, I deleted my Fibonacci uh, on accident. Let's do that again. Let's put that right back in. Bottom left uh, to the upper, oh, to the upper right, and over to the right. Okay, one, two, three. And do I have Fibonacci on there twice now? That is weird. Now I've got it on there twice. There. Now I've only got it on there once. I don't know how I managed to do that. Okay, so now you've got some Fibonacci levels. Now, does it work perfectly? No. Does it give you some ideas? Yes. Um, I knew that you know this, this level, there might be a little bit of resistance and there was, it trended sideways. And then it broke through that level and that level became its support level. Uh, when it came back down here. Uh, it's interesting, it actually came all the way up, touched. Now, did I know it was gonna go through all these? No, I mean, it sort of paused. It's really rather interesting. I mean, this is fascinating. Let's actually look at this. Here we are, I just, I just drew, bottom left, upper right to the right. But notice that when it got to this Fibonacci level, the 61.8, okay, what happened? It paused. It paused because people weren't sure what was going to happen. I mean, we've got one, two, three, four, five candles. I mean, for an hour, this thing kind of sat right here and then it decided to break through it. And when it got up to the next level, it actually paused there as well for a half an hour before it broke up to the next level. Um, that's where it couldn't get through and it started on its way back down. On its way back down, notice it got down to back down to the 61.8 and it paused here. It sort of acted a bit as resistance. Uh, here we, we, we could skip ahead one. I mean, every one of these is 15 minutes. So one, two, three, I mean, it did go up a little bit. Um, three, four, I mean, for a couple of hours, it just went sideways a bit on this Fibonacci retracement level before it decided to break out again and, and head back towards this one. So does Fibonacci work perfectly? No. Is it a tool to help you? Yes. Are other people looking at this? It's just rather interesting that these lines would be places, here we are at the 38.2, where buyers did step in and it gave it some support. I mean, look at that. And in fact, uh, no, it's not quite a hammer. I was gonna say, you almost are seeing a hammer right here. I mean, look at that one. Can the there's a wick on that though, um, but you saw you're in a downtrend, downtrend, downtrend. You got a partial hammer formation, and it turned into a reversal. It just happened to be at this Fibonacci retracement level when it started to go back up. So, are these tools helpful? Yes. Are they perfect? No. Can I use these tools to help me along my journey? That's the whole point is if you're doing some type of technical analysis, remember, according to Charles Dow, his theory, markets are, are all efficient, news is getting factored in immediately, and it's simply supply and demand. Where are there more buyers? Where are there more sellers? You'll see patterns form on charts and that you can use these tools to identify patterns, support and resistance levels, trend lines, reversals, all things that might help you with your journey. 
All right, with that, I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. I do wanna be cognizant of everyone's time. This session was recorded. You will find the recording again on our YouTube channel as well as on the Nadex uh, website in the webinar section archive. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, I hope you also join at our morning analysis sessions uh, every morning. And if you can't join at least Watch the recording to help give you some ideas on what might be interesting for that day. I want to thank you all again for joining, and I want to wish you all good luck in the markets.